At the end of the last video, I got a strange situation where the reduced row echelon form had a column without a leading one. I want to talk through this in general in this video, telling you how to interpret all the various types of matrices you can get out of the row reduction process. To get to that general form, I have to think about what is possible for a linear system. In general, there are three possibilities. The linear systems might have, have no solutions at all. There might be a unique solution, as there was in the first two examples in the last video. And finally, there might be infinitely many solutions. Notice that it's either zero, one, or infinitely many. Getting exactly two, three, or some other finite number of solutions can't happen. If there's more than one solution, there's going to be infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions is tricky to understand, but there already is some theory from last week that helps. If there are infinitely many solutions, those solutions form a set which we call the solution space. This set will be an affine subspace, a line, a plane, or a higher dimensional analog. The description I, descriptions I used last week for affine subspaces will apply here. Recall how I defined affine subspaces. They were linear subspaces L plus an offset vector U. But a linear subspace was just the span of some number of vectors. The span was a linear combination, so everything in the affine subspace looks like the offset U plus some multiple of each of the spanning vectors. In this description, AI can be chosen arbitrarily, and every choice gives something in the affine space. The AI are free parameters, and the number of free parameters, at least when the vectors VI are linearly independent, is the dimension. This is the language I can bring to the solution space, free parameters and dimension. So, let me talk about solving systems by row reduction of matrices. There are again three possibilities in the final reduced row echelon form of the matrix corresponding to the three possibilities from before. If there is a row that translates to 0 equals 1, then there is no solution because 0 equals 1 is a contradiction and cannot be satisfied. If all the columns at least left of the division have leading ones, then there is a unique solution. Every variable, since columns represent variables, will have a specific value assigned to it. If there is a column without a leading one in it, that column will represent a free parameter. The number of such columns will be the number of free parameters, which is the dimension of the solution space. All right, let's get into some interpretation examples. First, something with unique solution. Here is a reduced row echelon matrix. In this case, each column has a leading one, and there are no zero equal one rows. So this has a unique solution, x equals negative three, y equals negative two, and z equals eight. This is a very similar matrix, but now there are four columns before the division. That means there are four variables, w, x, y, and z. The first three, w, x, and y are determined, but z is free since the z column has no leading ones. If I interpret this matrix, I can see that the first row translates to w equals negative 3, the second to x equals negative 2, and the third to y equals 8. z is free and can be anything, so there are infinitely many solutions, and the dimension of the solution space is 1. Here is something similar again, but the z column now has non-zero entries. This is still in reduced row echelon form. Each row has a leading one, and the leading ones are in columns of zeros. However, now I have to translate each row. The first row translates to w plus 2z equals negative 3. If I solve for w, this is w equals 2z, negative 2z minus 3. In the same way, I can translate all three rows and move the z terms over, and I get three equations these way this way. Each equation relates w, x, and y to z, and z is the free parameter. I can add in the trivial equation z equals z as well, and then I can translate this into vector notation by writing w in the first spot, x in the second, y in the third, and z in the fourth. And I get this vector equation. 
the solution, the vector w, x, y, z, is equal to a fixed vector, negative 3, negative 2, 8, 0, plus any multiple of negative 2, 1, 1, 1. This is the solution space as an affine span, offset span. In this case, it is an affine line. It is the line I get starting from the point negative 3, negative 2, 8, 0 in R4, and then adding any and all multiples of the direction negative 2, 1, 1, 1. All those points that I get this way are solutions to the system. Here is a more extreme example. There are two columns without leading ones, the y and the z column. So there are two free parameters, y and z. I can translate the first row and move the y and z terms to the right to get the w alone. And I can translate the second row similarly. This gives two equations, and I add the trivial equations y equal y and z equals z to them. And again, I write these four equations as the components of a vector equation and I see that the points in the solution, w, x, y, z, are determined by an offset vector, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 0, plus any multiple of negative 3, 1, 1, 0, and then also plus any multiple of negative 2, 1, 0, 1. This is a two-dimensional affine subspace, a plane in R4, as the solution space for this system. Finally, consider this matrix. This is like the earlier matrix, but the last row is new. If I translate this last row, there is only 0 to the left, 0x plus 0y plus 0z, and there is 1 on the right. This translates to 0 equals 1. This is not possible, and there are no solutions to the system represented by this matrix. This completes the quick tour through interpretation of matrices and solution systems. This takes some practice, so I hope the activities are particularly useful this week. Hopefully, though, you're already starting to see how some of the themes will work together in this course. There is algebra here, solving systems of equations, but there is also ge geometry. The solution spaces are affine subspaces in Rn, and I can describe them through the tools of spans and offset spans. The geometry and algebra all fit together in fantastic ways, all informing each other and all describing each other.